Hello everyone, a warm welcome to Snowflake interview session. Today we are going to see uh, in very common interview questions and we'll briefly discuss their solutions as well. And this session is conducted by HKR Trainings and let's get started. Okay, so first question, what is Snowflake? Right. So Snowflake is a cloud data warehouse platform. Like uh, we have other data warehouse platform in on-premise, we have some enterprise data warehouse platforms. Snowflake is a cloud only or cloud native data warehouse platform you can think of, right? And it enables uh, you to store your data, process your data, and get some analytics out of your data. It has built on top of cloud layers like AWS, Azure, and GCP, and it doesn't come with the on-premise version. And in terms of offerings, these are this platform is more than flexible than other traditional offerings. Let's move on to the new, next question. So is Snowflake available on-premise? So the answer is no. In the last question, I have mentioned that it is cloud only platform. So you cannot install Snowflake on-premise. You can only access a Snowflake from the cloud. And it says it's a true SaaS offering. It is software as a service, which can be only hosted on public clouds like AWS, Azure, or GCP. Let's move on to the next question. What are the three key layers on Snowflake architecture? Right, so Snowflake has been built on top of three layers. First one is database storage layer. Second is query processing or compute layer. And third is cloud services layer. Database storage in brief is, uh, you can compare this to your hard disk storage in your personal computers or laptop. Query processing or compute, you can think of as a RAM in your laptops or computer. Right, which is used to perform some operations or some processings. And cloud service layer is out of the box layer, which Snowflake has created and given us given to users like us. <clears throat> so there's some uh, value-added functions like authentications, right, user management, billing, all these taken care by the cloud service layer. Briefly, I can show you Snowflake architecture. So here you can see in this diagram, the very middle layer is the storage layer. On top of it, we have the compute layer. And on top of compute layer, the very circumference you see is the cloud services layer. And the typical uh, objective of cloud service layer is query optimizations, meta data management, security and governance, sharing and collaborations. So these are the key layers in Snowflake architecture. Let's move on to another question. What is virtual warehouse in Snowflake? So in the previous answer, I mentioned there is a middle layer called cloud services layer. Sorry, the middle layer is compute layer. And that is nothing but a virtual warehouse. So whatever query processing happens in Snowflake happens at the compute layer using some warehouse clusters that is called the virtual warehouse in Snowflake. It is not same as the data warehouse, which we, which we know in traditional data offerings. Here, warehouse refers to a compute cluster. It could be a single node cluster or multi-node cluster. Let's move to the new question. What pricing model Snowflake follows? So Snowflake comes with pay as you go pricing model, like other cloud offerings, like in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud Platform, any SaaS platform which comes with pay as you go model, Snowflake is exactly same as that. There is no upfront licensing fees or no upfront commitment which you have to make in order to subscribe to Snowflake. That means the more you use it, more you pay, 
and if you are not using it you do not pay for that time so it gives us the flexibility and remove any prior commitment let's move on to a new question which says explain different editions snowflake offers so you can subscribe to snowflake with these four different editions first one is standard edition in which this is more applicable uh, to uh, individual users like you and me or maybe small organizations or startups then snowflake offers enterprise edition these are more suited to large enterprises their scale is huge and they want some additional features than standard edition so additional features like fail safe and time travel we are going to see in next questions that is offered in enterprise edition which is not part of standard edition after enterprise edition there is another edition comes called business critical edition business Crit critical edition as its name suggests snowflake offers another level of security though enterprise and standard edi edition also provide security but business critical editions have some additional certifications so if you are dealing with financial data or any critical sensitive data then you can go with business critical edition and the last one is called virtual private snowflake or in short it is called vps so as we know snowflake is deployed on either aws azure or google cloud platform and they have the shared data center but if you choose to go with virtual private snowflake your hardware is deployed isolatedly that means your hardware will not be shared with any other customers so this is the highest level of security you get in vps edition let's move on to new question what is snowpipe so very simple answer snowpipe is used to load data from the flat files into snowflake database these flat files could be csv files tab delimited files parquet json in any flat file format you keep it in the stage layer and using snowpipe we can load those files from the staging layer to snowflake database snowpipe can be triggered manually or it can be triggered automatically that means it provide event based triggering as well so the moment file arrives on the staging layer snowflake snowpipe detects it and automatically loads that file into snowflake database tables now you heard the new term here snowflake stage let's see in the uh, upcoming questions what it snowflake stage so let's move on question number 8 talks about what data security features are in built in snowflake so snowflake provides as we go on cloud there is a, a lot of questions about security but snowflake provide best in class security standards in terms of encryption in terms of key management or data masking all those features comes out of the box with snowflake and you have various level of securities like network security you can implement you can allow or block some ip ranges you can mask your data dynamically you have role based access control for authorization for users also all the data by default is encrypted in snowflake so when we combine all these features it gives the highest level of security in snowflake now very important question comes during the interview does snowflake support database views and stored procedure so definitely snowflake support all the kind of standard database views and stored procedure because the native language which we use to interact with snowflake is a standard sql so all the traditional database views tables and stored procedures are supported by snowflake plus snowflake provides some additional functions which are very advanced in nature which are not available in traditional sql 
So that's the added advantage in Snowflake. Coming to the next question, this is very important and very new concept in Snowflake. So what is time travel in Snowflake? If you remember, I mentioned during the uh, question number third discussion about Snowflake addition, this time travel functionality is only available in the enterprise and above editions. It is not available in standard edition. So what is time travel? So you can think of time travel as a data recovery period. So by, by mistake, let's say you change or delete any data from a Snowflake database. You can go back in the time. You can define the time travel duration. That could be from one day to 90 days. So you can go back in time and retrieve that data very easily. You do not need to coordinate with any database administrator. As a Snowflake developer, you can write simple command to retrieve data that has been changed or deleted in last, let's say, 90 days. So it's kind of disaster recovery also uh, it supports and any human error or manual error if we made using the time travel, we can recover that data. That brings me to the next question. What is the Snowflake stage? So if you remember one of the questions we talked about Snowpipe. So Snowpipe loads data from staging to database layer. Let's say what is the stage in the Snowflake? So a stage is an intermediary location in a Snowflake where you can store your flat files or any kind of external files which you somehow would want to load in a Snowflake database. You store first those files in the stage. Now there are two types of stages. One is external stage and internal stage. So you can treat an object storage location like in AWS, it's the S3 bucket. Azure, it's a blob, blob storage. Similarly, GCP provide a storage location. Any of these storage location, which are on cloud, you can consider them as a stage in a Snowflake. That is called external stage. Similarly, Snowflake provide internal stage where within a Snowflake account, you get some intermediary space where you can load these files. That is called internal stage. So remember, this is very important from interview point of view that there are only three kind of external stages possible, AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, and Google Cloud Storage. And internal stage is always inside a Snowflake. So first you have to put your file from your local directory or local computer to a stage. And then using a Snowpipe, you can load this data from a stage to actual database tables inside a Snowflake. Let's move on to another question. Question number 12 says, does Snowflake support storing semi-structured and unstructured data as well? So this is very trending in market these days. Because with, which, with evolution of data, there's a need to store semi-structure and unstructured data and write analytics on top of it. So since Snowflake is an advanced cloud data warehouse platform, and yes, it does support both type of data structures. So for semi-structured data, we can use a new data type, which is available in Snowflake called variant data type. Like we have integer or character or var care to store integer and string data. Similarly, semi structured data like JSON or XML, we can store in variant data type column. Similarly, unstructured data like text files, etc., or documents, we can store in Snowflake stage. So, to the answer to this question, yes, Snowflake does support semi structured and unstructured data storage as well. Coming to question number 13, what kind of SQL does Snowflake use? Right. So Snowflake supports most common standard SQL, which is called ANSI SQL. Right. And the SQL you use in any other databases like SQL Server, 
or Oracle DB2 Teradata, similar SQL statements and functions are available in Snowflake. So you need not to learn any new language in order to operate with Snowflake. Your previous SQL knowledge fits here perfectly. Plus, as I mentioned previously as well, along with this standard SQL, Snowflake has created some custom functions, some custom data types as well for advanced operations, like to handle uh, semi-structured data and an unstructured data. They have various functions created in Snowflake. Moving on to next question, number 14. What type of database is a Snowflake? So generally, uh, there are various databases, type of databases available in the market. Some are uh, like document store, relational databases, key value pair kind of databases, graph databases, right? If you divide in this category, Snowflake is entirely built on SQL database. And it you can access Snowflake in rows and column manner. And it is column oriented or column stored databases. So there are two types of databases, column stored and row stored. Row stored databases are mostly used in OLTP systems. And column stored databases such as Snowflake or Redshift, they are best suited for analytical systems. So Snowflake can easily be integrated with Excel Sheets, with Tableau or any other visualization sources where you need a data to be available in row and column format. Moving on to next question. Question number 15 says, what are the various ways to access Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse? So first of all, Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse, you can access through a browser, which is called Web Browser Interface, right? And you can access Snowflake in programmatical order as well. So Snowflake provides JDBC, ODBC drivers. And as I mentioned, Web User Interface, which you can open on any web browser. Snowflake provides Python libraries, Python connectors, those you can use and write any code to access with Snowflake. Also, there is a command line interface which Snowflake provides called SnowSQL. So if you are very much uh, comfortable with command line, you can go with SnowSQL. Otherwise, web user interface is there. And sometimes for writing ETL pipelines, you can use Python libraries or JDBC ODBC interfaces. Also, on top of this, any SQL client like SQL Workbench, DBWare, all these are supported by Snowflake. Coming to the next question, number 16. Is Snowflake OLTP or OLAP system? So first let's understand what is OLTP and OLAP system. So OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. For example, when you are dealing with any transactions with customers like order processing, purchase, right? Then those kind of transactions are stored in OLTP systems. So for traditional databases like Oracle SQL servers, those are most suited as a transactional processing system. And if you want to run analytics on top of your data, then you create data warehouse. Those data warehouses like Redshift, Google BigQuery, or Snowflake, they are more suited for OLAP system, which is online analytical processing system. So, so to answer this question, Snowflake is OLTP or OLAP? So by default answer would be Snowflake is OLAP system. And it is developed for online analytical processing. But having said that, we can use or utilize Snowflake as OLTP system as well. So it provides capability of using Snowflake as OLAP and OLTP system both, but it gives the optimal performance when you use Snowflake as OLAP system or OLAP databases. Moving on to 
Moving to the next question, what are the service offered by Snowflake Cloud Service Layer? So if you remember this diagram, which I showed previously, we are talking about very external layer, which is called the Cloud Service Layer here. So this question says, what are the services provided by Cloud Service Layer? So let's see some of the services. So first of all, in order to get into Snowflake, you need to have uh, credentials. So that authentication, when you do, that is handled by Cloud Service Layer. Then infrastructure management, creating compute resources, creating databases, right? Those kind of infrastructure, new user creations, those are taken care by the Cloud Service Layer. Then metadata management. So keeping track of all the indexes, caching layer, and metadata of tables or any other objects, those are taken care by, again, Cloud Service Layer. Another functionality of Cloud Service Layer is query processing and optimization. So you can write query SQL queries, as I mentioned, in a Snowflake, and parsing it to machine-readable format or optimizing it, optimizing it to getting the lower latency that is automatically done by the cloud service layer. And we need not to write any logic for it. This is in built by Snowflake and they maintain it. And at the last access control, like multi-factor authentications, you can set up and that is taken care by the cloud service layer. So these are the core features or service offered by the cloud service layer. Moving to the next question, number 18, what is data sharing in Snowflake? So data sharing is a revolutionary concept and it is a unique concept in Snowflake, which no other vendors or data uh, warehouse platforms provide this. So data sharing is, is enables Snowflake to share your data or object from your account to another Snowflake account. So if you want to expose your data and you want to become a data provider and you want some other Snowflake consumers to consume your data, you can become a provider and they, they can become a consumer. And with few commands only, you can share your data with your consumers. Like in earlier days, we have to write ETL pipeline in order to achieve this, extract the data from one database and load this into another database or another account. But with data sharing feature, Snowflake does it by default. You just need to add which data you want to share and the account number, the data will be shared with other Snowflake accounts. Moving to the next question, number 19. What is Snowflake data marketplace? As compared to the last question about data sharing, data marketplace is also a revolutionary concept in Snowflake. So think of any other product marketplace like uh, Amazon.com, etc., where a seller can uh, post their product or publish their products and buyer like us, we buy the products from. And that is Amazon work as a data, uh, product marketplace. Right. Similarly, Snowflake provides the feature of data marketplace where various Snowflake customers can publish their data using the data sharing to the data marketplace. And this data can be discovered by various third party consumers to consume it. So you can become a data as a service company. You can expose your data into data marketplace. And again, this works with uh, some monetization model. You can publish as a free listing or you can publish your data as a paid listing. And when consumers want to consume that data, they need to pay that cost to you. That's how using the power of data, you can monetize your data and publish it to rest of the world. And this is very unique feature in Snowflake, which is not available with any other data cloud platforms. That sets Snowflake apart with its competitors. So for example, if you want to consume weather data or any public like stock market prices, mutual fund prices, etc., you need not to hit their API or consume that data from any website. You go to 
Snowflake Data Marketplace. You can find these kind of data set available by default. And with the matter of single click, you can just have that data available in your Snowflake account or your databases. That brings me to the next question, number 20. What is SnowSite? Another very interesting concept in Snowflake, which is recently got launched last year, called SnowSite. With SnowSite, Snowflake is building a lot of uh, user experiences. So when you access Snowflake using web browser, Snowflake is their latest web console, right? Where you can write SQL query, which are auto-completed, which are much more uh, user-friendly than the uh, classic console. Also using SnowSite, you can design dashboard. So you write, keep writing SQL queries and SnowSite create dashboards for you. These dashboards or charts could be like bar charts, line charts, or pie charts. These kind of charts you can create inside Snowflake using the power of SnowSite. You need not to integrate another third-party tool necessarily like Tableau, Looker, ClickView. Rather, all those kind of visualization you can achieve inside Snowflake. And that framework or layer or UI is called SnowSite. A lot of new features Snowflake building in using the SnowSite. And currently, some features are in beta version. And this is very interesting. Also, as I mentioned, SnowSite accelerates the user query scripting and data visualization activities. So you, you need not to write your full table name. You just type the first letter and it will be autocomplete. Similarly, you can achieve a lot of visualization using SnowSite without integrating with another third party tools. That brings me to the next question, number 21. What is meant by Snowflake caching or how Snowflake caching works really? So Snowflake, uh, like uh, caching is a very common term in uh, software industry. Similarly, Snowflake also supports two types of caching. So whenever you perform any query or you write any simple select statements, Data is pulled from a database layer where the data is stored in this diagram and using these compute resources and present it to you on the UI. But Snowflake puts caching at the cloud service layer as well as at the compute layer. So how does this help as a user? So let's say you queried a simple customer records from the databases. First time it will go to the database at the storage layer and serve you the data. Next time, if you or anyone of your user query the same data, it will be stored in the caching layer and it will be served from caching layer. It will not go till the storage layer. What's the benefit of that? There are two benefits. First is performance. So if you're not accessing data from the storage layer, Rather, you are accessing this data from the caching layer, which sits on the top layer. The latency will be very low and you will get faster results. Second benefit of uh, caching is you pay less cost. Because you pay for the amount of time you use the compute resources. In order to query first time, it will take some more time to get the data. But if you're querying your data from caching layer, it will take less time, thus less cost. So these are the benefits of Snowflake caching. Let's move to a next question. Question number 22, explain tasks in Snowflake. So in simple words, you can think of tasks are like scheduling a tool or scheduling framework inside Snowflake. So if you want to schedule various activities like data uh, integration, data onboarding, some, some uh, data profiling, data quality checks, all those things if you want to perform and finally load data into Snowflake, then you can schedule these separate tasks 
inside Snowflake. In earlier databases, you have to install another uh, scheduling tool like Visual Crone or uh, Control M, etc. But here in Snowflake, this is inbuilt. So you can read this. The task in Snowflake is like a scheduler tool, right? Where you can write Crone syntax when you want to execute a particular task. And you can go to the any granularity like hours, minute, days, weeks, months, and year. In using a Snowflake task, either you can execute as SQL statement or you can execute a stored procedure, which is collection of SQL statements. The benefits of using a Snowflake task is this is inbuilt or one this. Uh, forces Snowflake to become a one-stop solution where you need not to integrate any third-party tool which saves your cost as well as maintenance of those third-party tools if you use Snowflake tasks. So you can remember the Snowflake task as just a scheduler tool which comes out of the box with Snowflake without any additional cost. And you can automate your workload, your workflows, and get rid of manual steps. Let's move on to the next question, number 23. What is vertical and horizontal scaling? This is very important to understand. When we are dealing with cloud and big data, scaling is something which is very important. So when I say horizontal scaling, that means you are adding more and more machines in your cluster to perform the bigger compute node or to handle a big data set, right? So when you add multiple machines in a cluster to achieve a higher compute power or handle a big data, that is called a horizontal scaling. Exactly opposite to this is vertical scaling where you keep increasing the power of one single machine in terms of RAM, in terms of processing power, when you keep increasing of the same machine, which is called vertical scaling. There is a limitations of vertical scaling, how much scaling you can achieve in the single machine, but in horizontal scaling, there is no limitations. So all the cloud vendors these days, like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform, they all support horizontal scaling because they provide unlimited scale. And Snowflake is also supports horizontal scaling, where you, wherein, as and when you need, you can add more and more nodes into your cluster. So just to remember this horizontal scaling, unlimited resource power, Vertical scaling, limited resource power. Let's go to the next question. Question 24. Can you set budget limits in Snowflake? Now, this is very important. When you are dealing with pay as you go model, then you need to have some mechanism to control the cost. Or you should be able to set some threshold. If the cost reaches that threshold, your account should be on hold or some of the processes should be or you should be notified first and then if you want you can configure your account to go on hold and then you can take care of your budget limits so to answer this question yes you can set the budget limits in snowflake and in order to set the budget limits you can use the something called resource monitors so you can set the budget let's say for example uh, you don't want to uh, spend more than $100, for example, in a month. Then you can set a limit. Maximum limit is $100. You can set an alert, email alert. If the limit is reached up to certain percentage, that is also configurable. Let's say 80% or 70%. At that time, Snowflake will issue or post one email on your mailbox. You can configure Snowflake in such a way that if your 100% budget limit is reached, let's say you consume $100 full within a month and month is not completed, you can ask Snowflake automatically uh, 
to kill all the sql queries or data loads within the snowflake so that your budget does not shoot after $100 and these budget limits are exactly similar to what you get in any SaaS offerings like any public cloud platforms like AWS, GCP or Azure. Similarly, Snowflake supports this in form of resource monitors. Let's move on to a question number 25. What is reader account in Snowflake? So as its name suggests, if you want to give somebody access to your data who is not already a Snowflake customer and you want them to be able to access your Snowflake data, then sitting on Snowflake, you can create a special type of account, which is called reader account. And once you create this reader account, it gives you one unique URL and your username and password you can set and give these credentials to your consumers who want to consume data from a Snowflake. An important point is they need not to be a Snowflake customer. So basically using the power of reader account, Snowflake enables you to share your data with the rest of the world who already does not own or have any Snowflake accounts. This is also a very unique feature to Snowflake, which is not available in its with its competitors like Redshift or Google BigQuery. So coming to question number 26, how to load data in Snowflake? That's very important. And that should be the first step after you create a Snowflake infrastructure. Very first step is how you load data into a Snowflake. Right, so very simple. You can load data in Snowflake in using any ETL tool. So there are various ETL tools, some traditional ETL tools like SSIS, Informatica, Talent, Pentaho. These are also supported by Snowflake. Also, you can use some new age ETL tools like Stitch Data, Matillion, SnapLogic, or Fivetran. These are the cloud-based ETL tool you can use to load data into Snowflake. Another way of loading data into Snowflake is using copy command. So if you already have your data files staged in Snowflake, you can just write copy command and use your stage as a source and your Snowflake tables as a destination and you can load data into Snowflake. Having said that, copy command does not offer a lot of transformations or it does not offer very complex transformations. You can perform lightweight operations using copy command. If your need is to transform or perform complex logic, then it is recommended to use any third-party ETL tool to load data into Snowflake, like you do in other databases. That brings me to the next question, number 27. Explain virtual warehouse cost in Snowflake. Now, if you remember, virtual warehouse is nothing but a set of compute resources in Snowflake. So if you recall this diagram, the second layer, which sits in light blue, it is the compute layer. And each of these individual nodes you are seeing are called virtual warehouses. And most of the costs in Snowflake comes from virtual warehouses. So this question asks us how this costing model work or billing work in virtual warehouse. So again, <clears throat> virtual warehouse cost depends on two factors. One in is size of the warehouse. So virtual warehouse in Snowflake comes with different t-shirt sizing, like small, uh, extra small, small, medium, large, XL, 2XL, till 6XL. So when you keep increasing the size, basically you are increasing the compute power of a single virtual warehouse. Obviously, if you consume more compute power, you need to pay more cost. And the second factor is the time duration for which your virtual warehouse is running. So for example, you fired a 
simple SQL statement in Snowflake. Say select star from customer table. And it took one minute to get your data, to get the result set. Then the cost you will pay is depend will depend on the size of virtual warehouse and the time duration, that is one minute. And there are various combinations possible. As I mentioned, there are various sort of sizes. So for example, if you run extra small warehouse for one hour, it consumes one credit in a snowflake. Now coming to next question, number 28. Is there any maximum data storage limit in a snowflake? This is very important when you want to decide which data cloud provider you want to go with, then you should know, is there any maximum data storage limit in a snowflake? So when you subscribe to Oracle or SQL server, you have to give data storage limit in advance. You have to do some capacity estimations, but since a snowflake is a cloud offering and cloud has unlimited data storage limit. Thus, there is no maximum data storage limit in Snowflake. You can store unlimited data in Snowflake. And you need not to decide a storage limit in advance. You can keep storing more and more data. Snowflake is flexible or elastic enough to increase its database storage size. So there is no uh, maximum data storage limit. It's unlimited data storage you get in Snowflake. Coming to the next question, number 29. Who are the competitors in Snowflake in current market? Right. So if you might have noticed in uh, previously, I was talking about these three Google uh, BigQuery and AWS Redshift. These are the uh, competitor currently in the market, which are competing with Snowflake because these both of them provides the unlimited scaling, all the benefits of cloud, but where Snowflake wins this competition is data sharing, right? data marketplace and compute resources. Those are very easy to create in Snowflake and maintain. That's where Snowflake sits apart from Google BigQuery as well as Amazon Redshift. Now, we know there are a lot of uh, offerings available in the market when it comes to data warehousing. That brings me to the next question, question number 30. What is unique about Snowflake? Which other cloud data platforms are not offering? So this is a very important thing. It's ability to isolate storage and compute layer. Now, if you remember this diagram, there are two layers essentially. One is the centralized storage layer, which sits at the core of Snowflake. And second is compute layer. So you can isolate your data processing or compute versus your data storage. And you can scale both of them independently which is not possible in most of the data warehouse platforms. Their compute is tightly coupled to storage. And that brings some certain kind of limitations. Not everybody can use same kind of data uh, at same point of time. There is a locking issues in previous databases, but that does not occur in Snowflake. Why? Because compute layer is isolated with the storage layer. That is the most unique thing about Snowflake. Other than that, there are, uh, as I mentioned, data sharing and data marketplace. These are also the unique feature which are not provided by any other competitors of Snowflake. Now, this is the 31st and last question of this session. How often is Snowflake releases new features? This is very important to understand because Snowflake is a evolving product or evolving platform and they keep releasing new features very frequently. So Snowflake releases new feature in the production on monthly basis. 
And first they launch this new feature in the beta version. And after getting some public review feedback, they deploy those features in public preview. Public preview means all the Snowflake accounts, they roll out new features. You can track Snowflake releases in the release notes on Snowflake website. So this brings to the end of this session. Thank you very much for attending this session. And if you have any doubt regarding Snowflake, please reach out to HKR support team and they will get back to you. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you. Take care.